Well, happy Wednesday coming Community Church. Pastor Thomas here. Hope you're having a great week so far, even though it is quite chilly outside this morning. And I'm not talking uh, chilly with an I that you eat. It's chilly with a Y as in Chilly Willie the Penguin. Anyway, next week, I'm supposed to be 65 on Wednesday. Who can figure out this weather? But um, I'm here today not to give you a weather report. Um, there's people more qualified than me for that. I'm here today for our midweek devotional. And uh, to remind you, of course, White Elephant uh, uh, gift exchange party this Friday night. Don't forget about that. Uh, but also just to encourage you with some uh, with a look at God's word. And we've been talking about this idea of Christmas and the idea of waiting for Christmas. We've been talking about it Sunday mornings. We've been talking about it here in this time. And how are we going to spend our time waiting for Christmas? And I wanted to take a look today at, at the person of Mary. Um, of course, Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, uh, is a, a person we're all very familiar with. Uh, but there's something very unique about when she was told that she was going to be giving birth to the Messiah that I want to look at today. So we're going to read now from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, starting in verse 26. And then we'll talk a little bit about the passage. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by, from God to the city of Galilee, city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And, she, and he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, or answered her rather, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will sh overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and in, this, in the sixth month with her who is called barren. For nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for this text and how you work in the most unlikely of scenarios for our good and for your glory. And so today, Father, as we look at this text, would you help us to discern what it means so that we can grow closer to you and to do your will? Thank you, Father. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, as we take a look at this well-known passage that we, many of us, of course, I know are familiar with, um, I'm reminded of a couple of things. The, the, the first one is that um, Mary had questions about how God was going to do this. God's plan didn't make sense to Mary. So rather than having it drive her to doubt, Mary was driven to ask questions. And what a beautiful reminder it is for us that when we see things going on that we don't understand, we should be people who ask God questions. But we need to ask them with faith. Unlike Zechariah, who is before, and unfortunately this time in, in uh, our, our look at, at the story of Christmas, we won't talk much about him, but he too was visited by an angel. And he too was told that his, in this case, his wife, who was barren, would give a son and she was to name him John. And, of course, Zechariah said, how can this be? My wife is old. She is barren. And the angel said, you do not believe. And so he was struck mute and could not talk until the birth of his son, which was probably a blessing for his wife. We don't know. The scriptures didn't say. But in Mary's case, she asked questions, but her heart was one of obedience and service. And that's the second thing I want to talk about. We ask questions with faith and that faith moves us to obedience. Notice the end of our passage, verse 38. And Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. 
At the end of the day, Mary said, okay, whatever God's going to do, God's going to do. Let it be so. And this wasn't a defeatist attitude, not okay, sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. It is what it is. In Mary's case, it's like, I am your servant, God. I want to be obedient to you. And so while we wait for Christmas and really every day, wait for the return of Christ, it's okay to ask questions in faith. They say, God, I don't get what's going on, but I trust you. And in the meantime, I will do what you ask me to do. That's the most powerful lesson of Mary, that while we wait, as just as she waited for the birth of this child, Mary waited with not just anticipation of a newborn baby, but she waited with faith and confidence that God was doing the right thing and in doing so uh, that he would be glorified, that she could trust him above all things. I pray that we would go and do likewise, that we would trust God in every way. Well, I hope that this finds you well. Don't, like I said, don't forget prayer meeting today. Don't forget White Elephant on Friday. Uh, be in prayer for those that uh, we've been emailing about that need prayer. But above all, I want you to have a great rest of your week coming, church. We will see you for sure Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for worship as we talk more about Mary uh, to exalt the name of Jesus. Have a great week. We'll see you then. God bless.